What's up everybody? I am Kendrick Dish, and uh, if you're familiar with this channel, you may notice that I am not in the same place I normally am. It's been a while. I moved, this is my new studio, moved into a new house, and this is my uh, new studio in the basement. And I did a lot of the renovations in this basement myself, and I'm not done yet. There are things I need to do, including uh, I need to put some acoustic dampening foam in some different places because the sound I'm sure is a little echoey It's kind of a big space and there are a lot of hard surfaces in here So I haven't got a chance to do that yet, but I'll be doing that soon, but I wanted to go ahead and get Started making more videos because it's been about six months since I recorded a video So you may notice I've got a bag with me This is the mind shift gear first light 30 liter bag and um, this bag comes in three sizes. They got the 20 liter, the 30 liter, and the 40 liter. This is the 30. And for those unfamiliar with it, Mindshift Gear is like a, a sub brand of Think Tank uh, photo. They had their outdoor gear, which was uh, Mindshift Gear, and they had their um, photography, other photography gear under the Think Tank brand, and they more recently they merged them into one website. Um, and I imagine they'll be phasing out the Mindshift Gear brand, but that's just my hunch. I don't have any information that that's what their plan is. But now you can just order the gear from the same website, and I think it helps with logistics and brand recognition and all that. So this is one of their out outdoor hiking style bags. And um, I decided to get one of these because uh, they're more comfortable. They're more comfortable to carry around. And this one in particular is very, very comfortable. It's one of the main reasons I like it a lot. Today, I have this thing absolutely stuffed to the gills. Like, I can't fit anything else in here. Um, but that's good because it, it can hold a lot of stuff. And I wanna show you exactly how much it can hold. It seems to hold a lot more than most 30 liter bags are able to hold. And I needed a bag that can hold a lot of stuff. Right now, I'm, I have multiple cameras that I uh, go. I don't hike that much. I don't, go, I don't take this bag out hiking. So uh, for me, it was a case of finding a bag that can hold a lot of stuff and was comfortable and, and durable. And I know it's durable. So I wanted to try it out. I've been using it for a while now. I'm really happy with it. There are some things I don't like about it, and we'll get into that. But I just wanted to give you my thoughts on this Mindshift Gear First Light 30 liter bag. It is one of the bags that opens up, you access the camera from the front. Um, that's one of the main things that might be a deal breaker for a lot of people. The, a lot of bags, you access the gear from behind the backpack straps. And, and that's because they wanna put the bag, you wanna set the bag down on, the, on this part and open it up and get all your stuff out instead of having to set the backpack straps in the part that's up against your back down in the mud or on the on the wet grass where it is that you're out in the wild and you want to set it down so for a lot of people that right there it's a deal breaker it's not for me because i don't do a lot of hiking and when i'm setting this back down i'm mostly setting it down on a table or on the carpet <laughs> wherever i am it's more, I'm more of a, a corporate uh, environment shooter so that's not a problem for me and I actually like that I like being able to set it down and open it up not have backpack straps flying around everywhere not have to go around them so for me this actually was a good sound that's why I picked it versus some of the others that open up from the back but opening up from the back is not a deal breaker for me either I'll try it both ways but I, w I really wanted to show you a couple of things on the outside first off it stands up it has some structure to it so it stands up and it it's it doesn't flop there are many other bags. I hate it when it flops over and won't stay up. Uh, this is perfectly level and balanced, and uh, I don't have any worries about it falling over. It's, it's perfect in that regard. You might notice here on the side, I have both a water bottle and a Joby Gorilla Pot in this side pocket. So let's take a look at that quickly. Uh, it holds both, which is just showing you how large this uh, water bottle holder is. Um, it's, let me take the water bottle out. I've got it actually Velcroed in so it doesn't fall out with a, my cut with a, one of my own Velcro straps. So that's not, doesn't come with it. But, um, 
water bottle. This is a 24 ounce water bottle and it just fits in that perfectly. And the Gorilla Pod fit, uh, fit right in there next to it with no issue. Oops, gotta make sure that's on there. This is the large Gorilla Pod too. Uh, and you can see that this is a quite large pocket here. What's nice about it is it has a drawstring. You can tighten up and, and make sure whatever you have in here isn't gonna fall out. It's got a, 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 a real good grab handle right above that. So if you got this stuffed with stuff, you may not be able to get that grab handle. And it doesn't have a grab handle on the other side, but I'll show you the other side in a second. It also has two straps uh, that are clip straps and a strap down here. So this is a nice place to put a tripod or skis or a walking stick or um, maybe some, a jacket, an extra jacket, just bundle up and put it here. So that's a really versatile side area to put a lot of things in. Um, it's got a bungee down, down here at the bottom, which is really nice for, for hooking stuff too. I keep my little clamp on, my little clamp just kind of right on there. Uh, one other thing I want to show you about these straps is the mechanism to tighten and loosen these straps is actually really nice. It is a standard uh, plastic buckle, but to loosen, to loosen it and tighten it, there's a flip up component right here. This little thing flips up and down. And once it's open, then you can stretch out the size of the hold the, the fabric here, tighten it back up and then clip that down. And that keeps it from changing size on you. And I think that's really important for your stuff to be secure for long hikes or, or you know, days and days when you're out traveling or whatever. So this is a, a really nice little feature that most clips like this don't have. So I'm really happy with that little, just that one little piece right there. So that's that side. Let's look at this other side. It's not the same. This other side has a large pocket right here. And this large pocket is actually meant for a water bottle. Not a water bottle, a, uh, like a Camelback, a water pouch with the straw system. So it actually has a built-in water, uh, whatever those things are called, the, the water Camelback pouch. Um, and it goes right in here and it has a, uh, a specific place that you route the hose out. There's a hole right here and the hose for the water thing comes, comes out right there. So you can run it along the backpack strap um, underneath the little, uh, the little elastic bands that are right there. And that way that, that hose for the water is always just right there and you can take your drink. So that's really nice. I, since again, I don't hike, I decided to put something else in that pocket. So it's a nice big pocket. And I keep some audio gear in there. This is just a lavalier, wireless lavalier set. So some audio gear is in there. And this is a big ass pocket. So this, you can kind of see this thing is a, uh, you know, it's, it's big, it's pretty big and it fits in there perfectly. Um, this would fit a, a water bottle, a much bigger water bottle than this perfectly. I could probably get the Gorilla Pod in there as well. Um, so another giant pocket on this side for, all, for extra stuff. And I think that's really great. So that's a great pocket for extra stuff. And again, it's got these, it's got the straps here for securing other things to uh, this side as well. And it's got a water bottle holder. In case you're not using this, you can still stick your water bottle into that elastic pocket um, or snacks or whatever. So it's actually already on the outside of it. We're, I'm really impressed with how much versatility there is on the outside uh, and the sides to hook all sorts of um, whatever you need to carry right in here. That is not it though. There is another pocket up top here, uh, right in here. So let's take a look inside that pocket. And it's a fairly well-sized pocket that can perfectly hold uh, the rain cover that comes with it. I don't need the rain cover and I don't normally carry it with me, 
But for this segment, this video, I wanted to stick it in there and show you that's where it goes and that we are carrying it around. Uh, this is a good spot for uh, kind of a quick access pouch for something that you're not too worried about. I wouldn't put sunglasses in this pocket, um, but maybe some snacks or a phone. I think it's a great spot for a phone. Um, yeah, so that's a nice little, and it's kind of hidden too, so it's a little bit more secure than any other sort of out exterior pockets. While we're looking here on the back, let's talk about the suspension system a little bit in, in the back. This has really nice foam shoulder pads. These are extremely comfortable and they are adjustable. So as you look at this from this perspective, you can actually see that um, there are Velcro patches here and this harness system can be uh, raised and lowered depending on your body height. So I have mine set to the highest because I'm quite tall. Um, but if you're smaller, you can put that down and it won't be as, it depends on how long your torso is. I have a long torso. So that's really nice. It's totally adjustable to your body. The other nice thing on these is it has the load lifters. So once you get the bag on and you got it pretty heavy, you can kind of tighten this up and get it cinched cinched on uh it's got like i mentioned a few minutes ago it's got bungee uh, elastic straps here on this for for either hooking something onto or or really running the the water straw the bendy straw down to here um it's got uh, webbing here so you can hook other things onto it um on both sides and it also has a sternum strap that is adjustable by just sliding up and down. So that's actually handy. I don't have any issues with uh, anything on here. The sternum strap seems normal and fine. It's got a little whistle on it like some do um, for scaring off grizzly bears, if that's your thing. The belt system is actually very comfortable. I like it. And if I was hiking, I would love it. But since I don't do any hiking, uh, the belt the belt thing is not that important to me with this bag. But what I do a lot of on occasion, well, not a lot of, but sometimes, is I have extended travel. So I might be going through airports for, for like weeks at a time and, I, and, and, you know, long walks or, you know, going through the city like 10 blocks walking from one station to the hotel or whatever. Uh, sometimes that can get a little bit. So having this as an option is really nice. Um, but I, I, I kind of just wish they were detachable. They're really comfortable, but uh, if you're not using them, they're kind of in the way. Uh, they don't really tuck away any particular way. Um, so I just kind of, I kind of leave them out like that. And it's a little bit of an annoying thing I have to deal with, but I do it because I like the rest of the bag so much. So let's look at a couple other things. Uh, it's got a very nice top handle. This top handle has this like an inch of foam and it makes it very comfortable to grab. Um, it's super stitched in here. I don't have any worries about this thing breaking or not being able to handle the weight. It's a, as you would expect from Think Tank or Mind Shift gear, really solid construction and, and durable as heck and pretty comfortable. The pockets on the front. There's gonna be this thing that some people are gonna not like about this bag. It doesn't really have a great laptop pocket for you. It's got this pocket right here on the front that is big enough for a laptop. And I think I read that it can hold a 17 inch. But this pocket's not padded whatsoever. Um, and it doesn't have a pad down here in case the laptop hits the, hits the pavement or the ground or something your laptop could hit. So it's, it's, a, it's a pocket and a laptop fits in it, but I wouldn't describe it as a laptop pocket. It's not fleece lined, it's not padded. Uh, it's kind of just, you put your laptop in a case in a neoprene sleeve or in a hard shell plastic case, and then you put that in here and you'll be all right. I don't, I don't carry my laptop in here very often because I usually have another bag with me and the laptop is usually in there, but this is a good sized pocket with some depth to it. So I wanted to show you what all I'm 
carrying around in there a microphone, more audio gear. You'll start to see a pattern here with audio gear. This is a Rode uh, NT G4 Plus, whatever. Just a, a shotgun mic. And I also have a cable for that, an XLR cable. So that's what was in this pocket. And that, went, that pocket goes all the way down. But before, like I can't get my arm in there because A, we're stuffed really full, but I also have something in this pocket that's hindering me a little. That is in this side pocket here, access it from the side, goes all the way across. There, I have the iPad in there. So this is iPad mini. It fits in there pretty well and I just don't have to worry about it. Well, it's not the greatest place for the iPad mini. I don't normally carry the iPad mini in there, but I wanted to put something in there for you guys to see. All right, so now you can see this, this pocket. Well, hold on. Another microphone. I forgot that I had both of them in there. Um, this is a Shure uh, SM58 or 57. Yeah, 58. Um, so it's good for podcasts and that was in there and I forgot that I had that in there. So there we go. Another, <laughs> you forget you have a microphone in there. It goes all the way to the bottom there. Uh, and it's got some depth. So two microphones and XLR cable in that pocket. Um, and an iPad mini in this pocket. This would be a good place for the rain jacket too. If you just kept, kept it right in there. So. Okay, one more thing I want to get into before we dive into the guts of this bag, and that's the materials that it's made from. Uh, it's a lot of sciencey term, like technical stuff that I'm not that familiar with, but I will say it's got YKK zippers. And here's what the website says it's made from, just so you know. For superior water resistance, all exterior fabric has a durable water repellent coating. The underside of the fabric has a polyurethane coating. It's also the highest quality abrasion resistant zippers, 420D velocity nylon, 420D high density nylon, 1680D ballistic nylon, 210D nylon, 320G Durastritz mesh nylon webbing, 350G air mesh nylon webbing, three ply bonded nylon thread. So it's made from uh, highly engineered materials and it, I have no worries about holding up and the water repellent coatings seem uh, perfect for this kind of a bag. So just to cover our bases and talk about that, uh, I have zero worries about the materials of this bag. And it's got one large opening and zips with two zippers that zips all the way around. And you open it up. Let me turn it turn around like this. And you can see on the interior here, we have three pockets. I've got these pockets pretty full. Um, they are made from a basically what is a mesh material. It is not plastic. It is it has holes in it. So it's a breathable mesh. It's not solid. So everything in here gets um, it's not sealed up. I have uh, tons of cabling in this one. Um, fil lens filters in this one. I've been carrying around like this for a while and I haven't had any issues. Up here, I've got extra batteries, couple couple things, a lens filter pen or lens wiping pen. Uh, my little box of, my little box of like camera first aid stuff. This isn't like band-aids and stuff. This is like Velcro and, um, and like things a photographer might need. There's an extra SD card in here. Um, a little bit of tool, some tools, a little bit of a little tiny knife, just things you might need as a photographer. Like, so that's in there. So a little, all my accessories go in there. Uh, what I want to do is I kind of want to lift this up and show you what's on the inside. Uh, lots of camera gear in here. So you can see I've got it set up and pretty typical of camera stuff. I don't have my cameras in the middle. I have my camera on the outside because I don't usually, uh, I don't usually carry carry my cameras with the lenses attached. So I like to have the cameras in the sides and accessories down the middle. So that's the way I do it. Let me set this back down and we'll we'll I'll pull out a lot of this stuff and show you kind of what it is. One thing that is 
uh, really great about this bag is it has a ton of depth. So you can carry the taller cameras with, or with the battery grip or the um, tall cameras. This is right here, I've got headphones. So you can see this is a pretty tall, it's about the same height as a, uh, a camera. So since I do a ton of video stuff, mostly these days, audio gear, more audio gear that I need to carry around. In this bag, this is uh, my, my, my pack, pack of goodies that has to do with put uh, the cage together and um, little tools and all that, all the little things I need in order to build my camera. Uh, because what I've got is I've got Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K. This is the camera I've been shooting a lot of my video productions on and it's got the cage on there. I don't like having to take everything apart. So I wanted to make sure I had a bag that could hold this thing upright with a lot of stuff attached, including the hard drive holder, the Metabones speed booster. Um, uh, the, actually, you can see I got a tripod plate on here. It all just like, the faster I can throw this together and onto a tripod and start shooting, the better. So not have to pile, like spend an hour putting parts together. I like that. You guys familiar with this camera, you might know that, or you might not know that you can pop off those little rubber uh, gaskets on the side here, and then you can actually put them back in later. It's not a permanent removal. So I just have, I just took those off because I don't, they, they were too much in the way. So pop them, pull them off gently and slowly and they come out. You can actually put them back in just as easily. So just a little trick for the black magic people. I also have one of these in here for cleaning the lenses. These mirrorless cameras, man. I tell you the dust on these things is, it's an epic battle. You're always fighting it. I am anyway, especially on the Sony. Oh, I have a Sony. Yes, we'll talk about that too. Um, in this pocket, the Rode video mic, more audio gear. But underneath that, let me show you that again. I took the microphone out of right here. That's where the, the microphone was. And I take the microphone out. Underneath this flap right here, I actually have another camera. Upright, it's standing like I don't have it lying flat, I have it standing. And that is Sony A7R3. Yeah, the Sony A7R3 with the, with the Metabones on there. These are the two cameras I have been shooting with lately. The Sony for photography in some video and the Blackmagic for video. I'm gonna make another video about why I am shooting on these cameras instead of the Fuji cameras that I used to shoot with. And uh, you know, that's a whole nother video. So I'm not getting into that today, but so this is the pair I'm, I'm carrying around. And with these, with both Metabones, they're both set to use Canon lenses. So I've gone back to Canon lenses. I shoot a lot with the stabilized 24 to 105 um, F4. That works well for the kind of work that I am doing. And that's in there. Upright, by the way. So this is a pretty big lens. Let's test that autofocus. You see that? It goes in upright, which is perfect. So it's this height of this bag, which is just great. On the other side, over here, uh, I have, right now I have the 50 millimeter, one point, is it 1.2? Yeah, 1.2. Um, I don't haven't had this lens that long. I bought it off, I bought it used on Craigslist. Um, and, uh, and, I don't, I carry this around some and I've used it some, but mostly the one, the other one I carry around I'm using for this video and that's the uh, 16 to 35. So usually I don't carry three lenses with me or if I do, then something else is coming out or it's, I got more bags that other stuff goes in cause it's a bigger shoot. So I kind of pick out what lenses I need and take just those. So in here, I also have a five inch monitor. This is the, uh, the video devices Pixie 5, which is a monitor and a recorder. Uh, it's a really great, it's a really great uh, monitor. Um, it, it gets a little hot and it's a little funky with the, um, the hardware. Um, it's had to, had to get new firmware put onto the memory cards a couple of times. So it's not the most reliable unit 
but I got a good deal on it, and it's uh, it's nice to have the recording options, um, and it's a good monitor. So I've got the lens hood that snaps right on. This is the fastest lens hood that goes on there you've probably ever worked with, except for the fact that it is uh, kind of a pain in the ass to carry around. But, you know, that's a nice monitor to have in the bag. Here's a quite large item. This is the carry around a little, um, a little light. This is the ICANN, which model is this? ICANN model OYB120, uh, bicolor, a uh, little, little LED light for different things. I just carry it around sometimes just as a, just in case light. Um, and I've got it in this uh, little Tumi bag that you get when you fly first class. You can see that. It's a, it's a hard shell case and that light fits in there perfectly with a couple of batteries. And so I love that. And it just kind of, I, st I stick it in and it works perfectly um, for storing that stuff. So as you know, as you, as, you, as you experience the world and you come across things, you don't have to always buy photography gear like to, to, do, to hold the photography stuff. So I try and think up different things that will hold, you know, this, the ones that's holding my, uh, let's dive into this for a second. This case right here that's holding some audio gear, this is just like, a, I think it's like a Nintendo Switch case or something. Um, I got it at Goodwill for like $2 and it's just a hard shell case and it ho holds my microphones. So let's, let me show you that. Yeah. So it's got batteries. It's got my Rode lavalier mics and a little compartment here for, for extra stuff. And so it's just nice to be able to have everything nice and neat and tidy and organized and in a hard shell protected case. And it only costs like two bucks. So be on the lookout for things like that to to carry your carry your stuff in because um, there's all kinds of stuff out there that's not photography marketed that's a lot cheaper also got my think tank card holder in there memory cards and think tank battery holder that holds the dslr batteries this one has my uh the batteries for the black magic although i'm powering the black magic mostly off of the sony batteries um, because I have this handy little adapter for the Blackmagic that allows it to power off of these batteries that last a lot longer. Um, but I carry the others just as, just in case. Got four of those things, so four batteries. So you're starting to see how much crap this bag has been holding this whole time. All right, so that's all the stuff out of here. Um, now we can kind of see this bag empty. And you can see it's just these normal Velcro things, but they're, they're real solid and I have no, no issues with any of it. Uh, really nice storage system. Let me zip this back up. There's a couple other things I want to show you guys before calling this video complete. That is that underneath this flap right here, there is a, you release the Velcro and you pull and you end up with a, a tripod foot pocket. So we'll use the, we'll use the Gorilla Pod as an example. It's not large enough, but you'd want the full thing, but you just put one or both of the legs into that pocket like that and it, comes up here and then there's a another velcro the camera cut off i ran out of card space on the camera i don't i don't know exactly when it cut off but um i think it was when i was talking about this pocket here so you got your your tripod pocket down here and you've got your strap up here so you can basically um secure your tripod on the front here so what what i want to be kind of take an extra second to point out is that it had the ability to hold a tripod or some other items on this side and this side and on the front. So you can carry 
your your all sorts of things. It's just really a fantastic overall system for the kind of photographer that goes outside and shoots stuff. I would highly suggest this bag if you can get over the fact that it opens from the front. From a travel, from a like urban traveling perspective, it doesn't really have some any, like any noticeable um, security features that like uh, that are you know special. The, 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 if you can see here, the, the zippers can lock. So you can put those all the way down here and you can lock it around here so that it can't be opened. Um, so well, that's pretty good. I would suggest doing that if you're traveling, but these zippers here, which expose your laptop, if it's there, uh, they don't have security features to protect people from snooping. Um, so, you know, be considerate of those facts, but if you're looking for a bag that is comfortable and can hold a, just a ginormous amount of things, um, this is a good one to consider. There's one more con for urban travelers getting through airports and whatnot, is there is not a, a luggage pass-through. Uh, I imagine that if they come out with another ver version two of this bag, they would put a, uh, a luggage pass through somewhere on here so that you can put this bag on top of your roller because that's the way I like to do things is I have a backpack full of gear and then a roller full of other clothing and whatnot so uh, when I'm going through the airport or on a train or doing the things that you do when you're urban traveling uh, being able to uh, put this right on the roller is important first light 30 liter bag I'd, I'd love to try a 20 I'd love to try a 40 I think the 40 would be pretty heavy, but I would love to try it. If, uh, if mine shift, if you want to send it to me or you want to send me other bags, I'm, I'd love to do that. Anyway, thank you for taking the time to, to let me drag out all my stuff out of my bag here. Uh, and thanks for watching. This channel is all about, you know, living this digital life, cameras, computers, software, travel, stuff to carry everything in. That's my, one of my hobby little things i like the stuff that you use to carry like i like finding this finding these little things and finding what fits in here that's like i love that <laughs> it's a little thing i enjoy so uh thanks for watching and we've got more videos coming up about my new studio uh the things i've done to make this uh, a space i can work out of and shoot out of and have up my creative partners working with me in this space and 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 Basically, it's just a fun place for me to, to do my work. So uh, more about that coming up soon. I got all new gear. I used to be a Fuji guy. I've switched to these other cameras and um, I wanna talk about some reasons why. I wanna talk about the camera I'm shooting on. Anybody got any guesses as to what this camera right here is? I bet you can't guess it. <laughs> uh, let me know in the comments if you have a guess. Um, and we'll, we'll, I'm gonna make a whole video just about this camera right there. Uh, it's not what you think. I promise you that. Anyway, um, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one.